full disclosure, the voice you are listening to now is artificially generated, brought to you by Satisphonic.com. See the link in the description for more details. What is denied by many people, but it is actually 100% real? You can love someone else without loving yourself first. There's plenty of parents that hate themselves and love their kids. Not recommending it, but it's a stupid thing to deny. I would even argue it's much easier to love someone other than yourself. Your herd mentality. The Ike of a mob is the Ike of its dumbest member, divided by the number of mobsters. Terry Pratchett. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals. Agent K, men in black. If it is happening to someone else, it can happen to you. Majority of folks aren't playing the official UNO rules. Monopoly, also. Monopoly is actually a better and faster game if played by the official rules too. Yeah lol, it's almost like the point is to snowball and have people lose instead of let them hang on to a 0% chance of victory for 4 hours. Psychics cannot predict when I will visit them. Do you have an appointment? Why would I need one? The second I'm passing a psychic, one walks out and says, Rolf, it's time. I will go in. I you don't know how to fight unless you've been trained or have experience in fighting. Most people imagine themselves beating us only to have reality smash them in the nose. A lot of people even injure themselves just trying to throw punches. My kids swore they could fight off a knife attack. My husband got a marker he had our kid try to separately fight each of us off them. They failed horribly. They failed horribly, but they now know it'd be near impossible to defend themselves in a knife fight. Knife fights are scary. When you enter a fight with a knife, you need to know that you are going to get cut. Not may get cut. Going to get cut. A lot, the best fighters, knife or not, know they are going to feel pain. They accept that as a part of what they are doing. Memma, military, police, security, all know that they are going to get hurt badly when entering a fight. Some rando off the street thinks they can get away without a scratch, but a real fighter knows they are going to the hospital after it's all said and done. That's what makes those people dangerous. Agree. I also think people might have an inherent bias that they would be coming out on top in a knife fight when it could just as likely be the bad guy. It reminds me of that knife fight near the end of Saving Private Ryan. Brutal, ugly, and a terrible way to die. In a knife fight, the loser dies at the scene, the winner dies at the hospital. I would add that many people who practice certain martial arts also overestimate their abilities. If you don't actually fight in competition, or at least serious sparring, then your training probably won't help as much as you think it will. Same thing is true for firearms training, and even more difficult to account for another thing, is some martial artists not being cognizant of the fact that real fights aren't fair. Your assailant might be armed, or there might be multiple people. Jiu-Jitsu is great against one unarmed guy, but your ground game will fail hard when the other guy's friend is standing and kicking you in the head while you execute a textbook triangle choke, or worse. Even the best fighters are wise to avoid a street fight whenever possible. Took karate and anis for four years, included a lot of serious sparring. Even in sparring, you never really use fancy moves. Lots of jabs and reverse punches, and a few low kicks, are what mostly get you. Sure, I did learn some moves, like spinning back fists, elbows, and a few hold slocks that I can still do, but my sensei straight up told us to run from fights and never ever fight fair. But my sensei straight up told us to run from fights and never ever fight fair. Yep. Did martial arts for a long time, both karate and taekwondo, and the golden rule for fights was run and fast. The reason, most people won't fight fairly, and you never know when you're going to end up with a knife in your neck instead. Sure, you know how to pull your weight, but even if you're plenty capable in training, it won't help much against a knife, a sharp object, someone way bigger than you, or against three or more people at once. The stamina and strength you gain training are better spent running and alive. I've sparred with a guy that outweighed me by over 100 elps. I couldn't do shit. His technique was non-existent, but it didn't matter. Just manhandled me. I was in the best shape of my life. When I first started learning jujitsu in the army, before I did tournaments and whatnot, they taught us that the point of us learning hand-to-hand -hand was to make it so we'd last until backup could get there. I think the instructor asked us who wins a brawl in combat. The first one to have a buddy with a gun show up. If you don't actually fight in competition, or at least serious sparring, then your training probably won't help as much as you think it will. To use that famous quote, 
Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Confirmation bias. Reading into a situation what you want to see. I knew someone would post this. But did you know it would be someone with poop in their name? When I went to sea, I would see the occasional flying fish. It was surprising how many people thought I was pulling their leg when I told them about it. Flying fish don't have legs. God, um. That our memory is very fallible and does not work like a video camera. Witness testimony is notoriously unreliable. You'll get 20 people who all saw the same thing saying 20 different things. Yep, I studied criminology and my professors made sure we truly understood that we can never trust witnesses. There's a Brain Games episode on this exact scenario. Pretty wild. Witnesses weren't even close to identifying the right per- That episode was scary as hell for that exact reason. All it took was a few minutes separation from the event and a couple of plants mentioning false things and multiple eyewitnesses to a crime that happened a few minutes earlier confidently described the perpetrator completely wrong. So well done. Simple but incredible way of getting the point across by actually inducing it in every viewer. Was that the classroom thief video? We watched that one in class, and it was amazing to see how badly people screwed up the description. Also, that professionals, law enforcement and courts, are bad at telling if someone is intentionally lying or speaking the truth. They are a bit better than the average Joe, but they overestimate their ability to tell truth from lies much more than amateurs. My understanding is that they are actually slightly worse than the same as the average Joe, but hold on to their incorrect conclusions because they are more confident, and the more experienced they are, the worse they get. And many, many innocent people have been imprisoned or executed because of it. Not if my cousin Vinny is on the case, but in all seriousness, that movie was ahead of its time on the unreliability of eyewitnesses. Eyewitness testimony is the leading cause of innocent people being convicted of crimes. The idea that you can identify someone you may have never met before, based on having seen them for 10 seconds, often under poor lighting, is very flawed. Tepps, Newsroom, Carleton, Castellier Witness, Misidentification, Wrongful, Conviction. I've been notoriously terrible at this. I can't tell people apart. The first time I watched The Departed, it was so confusing because I couldn't tell the two main guys apart. After I've seen someone enough times, I'm way better at it. A lie detector isn't reliable. I'm stunned by the number of people who think it is. I see it so often in news stories about crimes. People in the comment section say, just make him take a polygraph, then we'll know for sure. If anyone's reading this, don't ever agree to take a polygraph examination if you're suspected of involvement in a crime. There's a good chance it will produce a false negative positive, and even though the results are not admissible in court in many places, it may bias the police, the press, and your friends and family against you. If police push you to submit to a polygraph examination, it's because they use it as an interrogation tool. You'd think polygraph results not being admissible in court would be a hint that they don't work, but no. I've met people who know and accept that they're not admissible, but are also convinced they're 100% accurate. So far, none of these people can explain why we bother with trials and evidence and burden of proof and reasonable doubt, etc., etc., instead of just using lie detectors. If they worked, the justice system would be a hell of a lot faster. Eyewitness testimony is also extremely unreliable. It makes sense why Dene has exonerated so many people when the old tools used to investigate were all so terrible. Test the damn rape kits. The lie detector test and examiner rely on the belief that it detects lies. The testimony that comes after the results are told to them can be impactful. Even still, I am concerned there are innocent people with an easily guilted conscience who get put through the ringer with these tests. Who would have thought 30 years of Mori and 15 different flavors of law and order, all portraying lie detectors as infallible to the general public, would have had detrimental effects? Being 3550 wasn't considered elderly back in the day. It was common for people to live into their 70s and 80s. The reason we get average lifespan data with such low numbers is because so many babies died, skewing the average values downward. I'm not personally religious, but I recall reading that the Bible mentions man being granted three score and ten, i.e. 70, years of life. I agree with you. Even in ancient Egypt, if you made it through infancy, then you'd probably be good for well into your 70s or beyond. People largely deny responsibility for anything they contribute to. I was driving with my grandmother on Christmas Day, and she says, Ah, look at all these people out on the road. They ought to be at home. 
This is giving me retail flashbacks. Wow, I can't believe you guys work today. That's just terrible, as they're in my checkout line on Thanksgiving. No raindrop feels responsible for the flood. In the same vein, no snowflake is responsible for the avalanche edit. Fucking autocorrupt. Sand corrected to say me. My god, there's autocorrupt now. What have we done? Yes, it's like autocorrect but consistently wrong. I'm stuck in traffic, but I'm not traffic. When visiting a place I'm not from, I like to say I hate tourism. Shark attacks are extremely rare. Can we get a shout out for cougars too? They've killed 27 people since 1868. You could almost call them harmless with those numbers. I have a favorite quote from a park ranger. You may never see a mountain lion in the wild, but if you spend any significant time in the wild, they've seen you. Yup. I grew up in the mountains going on long hikes with my dogs. We often saw cougar tracks, as well as deer and other wildlife, but despite our next door neighbors regularly coming home to a cougar on their roof, we didn't see any. We would hear them at night. A while ago I found out they chirped like crickets and my blood ran cold for a second. I used to hear chirps all the time on my walks. But yeah, even when I'd go on walks at midnight in the hot summer, I was never as nervous as I am about walking in the city alone now. I used to walk heavily to warm the rattlers and never had an incident with a single aggressive animal at all. 75% a chance this guy is a shark. Nice try, buddy. Built in obsolescence, planned obsolescence. Shocked how many people don't believe it happened. It's okay, eat, miss. People eat piles of it without even realizing it. But as soon as they enter a Chinese restaurant, it's no misc for me, thank Exactly. And then the next day they're gobbling down ranch dressing aka liquid misc. Or seared meat, which is misco, or mushrooms, which contain natural glutamates. Or soy sauce, which again contains a ton of glutamates. There are few topics people are up their own asses about more than nutrition. A whole lot of stupid parades as advice about it. My mother has been convinced for 30 years that she's allergic to miski. Whenever we eat at a restaurant, she has to ask them if it has miske and if they don't know, she eats the most plain thing she can. She lives in an incredible location for seafood, but eats all of her shrimp plain. When she was younger, she would get incredibly sick after eating some meals, to the point of throwing up and passing out commonly. Her and my dad saw many doctors before the like. Sixth one, who I assume is a quack, said it was miscalogy. And she hasn't ate it since. She also hasn't had an episode except a few occasions where she forgot to ask about miski. However, she loves tomatoes, which has a ton of misguy. And I've read studies that show that miscalogies aren't a thing. I love misk and even have a bag of it to add to my cooking. I'm very tempted to cook her a good meal with a good amount of miski to show her that she can actually enjoy flavor. Miski is in nearly everything and she has to read the ingredients of everything at the grocery store. But I am absolutely not going to do that for the gotcha so I just let her live her. Culinarily bland life edit to clarify some things. Yes, I am very well aware that there is no such thing as miscallergy. I've read the studies years ago. Yes, I've tried showing them to my mom. No, it didn't convince them. She's committed to this false narrative. No, I'm not actually going to sneak some in her food. Even knowing it isn't real, I'm not doing that. Your mom is most likely wrong, but I would advise against food tampering. Even if you make a correct point, it will lose any trust she has with you. It's a very quick way to make someone extremely upset, and it is also illegal. Shaving doesn't make the hair grow back thicker. Doesn't it feel thicker because of the ends of the hair being flat instead of pointed? Yes. It also looks thicker because the flat end is so blunt instead of tapering off to look and feel thinner. So it feels and looks thicker. I can see why this fact gained traction. I'm convinced this lie only really exists to prevent a bunch of teenage boys from running around with some raggedy ass facial hair until it can grow in well. Group opinion, bias. I mean, you can spend five minutes on Reddit and see that this exists. The Monty Hall problem. Every time it is described in a post, such as a tile or on a Facebook post, a large number of people vehemently insist that switching doors couldn't possibly result in an increased chance of winning. Even after showing the results of simulations, providing mathematical proofs, or giving examples using more doors, the cognitive dissonance prevails. Best way to wrap your head around the mop is to imagine 1,000 doors. You pick one, host opens 998 empty doors. Should you switch or stay with your pick? It's the first time I've heard of this. 
But is my logic correct after reading your explanation? You have a random door at the start. The correct door is more likely to be in the group of 990, nine than it is to be your one chosen door. So by eliminating the other 998 doors in the 999 group, you won't be picking another random door. If the correct door was in the 999 group in the first place, which remember was more likely, then it will be the remaining unchosen door. So you should choose the other door. This is correct. It's much less noticeable when dealing with just three doors, though, since it becomes a case of I picked a 13, you removed a 13, and the remainder is the other 13 mathematically. The remaining door represents a 23 chance of being correct. But your original choice was still a solid 13, and could very easily be the correct choice. When we expand the problem to 1,000 doors, it's a little different, because your odds of selecting correctly at the start were 0.1%. And now you're left with a 5,050 choice, but the previous door now holds a 99.9% .9 chance of being correct. So it's much more obviously the correct choice. Sure, your original pick may have been correct, but it's not a 13 and 23 split like the original problem. I can see why an equal amount of potentially correct and correct unchosen doors makes this a lot more unintuitive. Chance seems generally unintuitive at low number. This right here, I never really got it until someone explained it this way. I think this one is misunderstood because people are bad at explaining it, or at least at emphasizing the key detail, which is that the problem assumes the first reveal is not random, and the host deliberately filters out a wrong door of the two you didn't pick for the sake of entertainment. It life after love. I want to believe in life after love. Not to be a jerk, but I can feel something inside me saying, I, I don't think you're strong enough, no. Thank you for cheering. That motherfucker back there. Autism diagnoses. Myself and lots of autistic people I know are often told by people who seem to base their entire knowledge of autism off the movie Rayman are like, but you don't seem autistic. Research on autism has changed a lot since the 80s, but public perception has changed very little. In group preference. Implicit biases. Despite countless studies providing evidence that it is human nature and inevitable people still deny and refuse to acknowledge their own action. Hate this. I have things I do in my mind to gauge any level of prejudice I may be unconsciously holding in a given situation. But if I mention this in a social group, especially one that counts itself as progressive, it just devolves into, wow, you're coming out and saying, you're exist, you're trapped. No, motherfucker. I'm gauging my own level of implicit bias internally to help me adjust my approach externally. I'm just putting that before my own ego. I hate the social need to deny having ever done anything wrong. I wish I could own my part in different issues without being deemed to be totally at fault or trash or whatever. Well, you did say you did X in the past. Why is it that the level of maturity and self-awareness that knocks therapists' socks off is an everlasting admission of guilt and immorality to everyone else? I have openly admitted I was homophobic and transphobic when I was much younger because I was raised in a conservative Christian household. I was never outwardly cruel, but I had biases that I had to really reevaluate for myself. As I've gotten older and listened to others, learned more about the topics, and met Lugbook to people that I love dearly, I realized how wrong I was, and now I advocate for them. Plus, I realized I was bi, and some of my thoughts were due to self-loathing. I'm not proud of being that person, but I am proud of allowing myself to grow and learn, and I want to do all I can to make up for my mistakes. No one is perfect. We were all raised in different environments that led us to have certain beliefs, and don't even realize until later how wrong it is. It's our willingness to change that makes us good or bad people. Pretty privilege how facially attractive people get guaranteed a lot of predetermined social, financial, and romantic success at birth. My camp girlfriend, you wouldn't know her, she goes to another school, I in Canada. As someone who had an internet girlfriend from Canada, who I am now married to and have children with, talking about her early on was very annoying because of this. What? She didn't believe in herself? America uses propaganda against their own population. And everyone is susceptible to propaganda, even if you are aware you are looking at propaganda. I didn't realize until recently how much propaganda was thrown at me as a child of the 80s in America. 
everything was about how amazing and great America was, and how awful Russia was, and weird propaganda too like how Russians were obsessed with Coca-Cola and Levy's Jeep. Edward Lansdale wrote entire PSYOPs plans for the US government on how to control a populace through propaganda and false flag conspiracy theories. That guy has an interesting track record. The CIA trafficked cocaine into the United States in the 1970s, 1980s to fund Central American freedom fighters, stop communism, and protect the American way of life. Once people realized the government was responsible for the drug epidemic that destroyed our inner cities for decades, it's not that hard to start questioning other decisions they have made. Talk to a bunch of fanboys about this, but Taylor Swift was born rich, and I mean mega rich, with nine-figure money on both sides of her family. All these people thought she came up from nothing. Invisible health conditions like dysautonomia, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue syndrome. Also, it had fatigue. People think you are faking just to get at the raw. I'm caught in this fun limbo of too disabled to work without immense suffering, but not disabled enough to qualify for assistance. It's 100% BC of this. I got brushed off by several doctors to the point that I'm in worse health than I could have been with proper treatment. If they can't see it, they don't care. Don't. That having children is not for everyone, that it's not all sunshine and the meaning of life and millions of people regret being parents. This is true, and I think everyone on both sides of this needs to accept that becoming a parent means absolutely committing yourself to the cause. You can't just give up when it gets too hard. Your kids are now your entire world. If you're not ready to commit to that, then you're not ready to be a parent. Too many of my relatives saw having multiple kids as a fun thing to do when they were wholly unprepared for the situation, and now they are kids and those kids' grandparents, if present, have to deal with the consequences. It's also a lot harder to have kids now than it was 25 years ago when I was born. I owe my entire life to the benefit system that supported my single mother and her four children, which was slowly dismantled as I became older to the point that my mother started leeching from her kids because she, she could no longer support herself. Now I'm earning more than she ever has, but I can't even afford to rent a flat. That they are good humans because they have good thoughts. You have to do good to be a good person. The world is full of people complaining, but we are in need of people willing to sacrifice and not make it about themselves. We judge others by their actions, but ourselves by our intentions. Tepsen, M. Wikipedia, or Wiki Fundamental Attribution Error. You are what you do. A man is defined by his actions, not his memory. Quattro. Psychological addiction to marijuana is a real thing, edit. To the you can be psychologically addicted to anything crowd. Yes, you can treat your dopamine receptors as a gumball machine with various different activities, but these are different to imbibing a foreign substance, which has the side effect of releasing dopamine. The point is many people deny that it's addictive but can't go an hour without being high. I'm sure you'll have seen burnouts. Edit to low dead ass, redicurs, im cry. This is especially true if you struggle with your mental health. I tried weed for the first time when I was 14, and it was an immediate relief from all of my worries and anxiety. I started smoking more frequently until it became a daily thing, but I didn't realize I was only getting high to escape from my problems. That was five years ago, and here I am sitting in my room, still high as fuck and still running away from my problem. This annoys me so much, I have friends who need to smoke another bowl if we are driving 10 minutes somewhere or they'll have a problem, Leo. I'm not addicted, I just need to smoke it every 15 minutes, or I get panic attacks, and my brain goes into Chernobyl nuclear meltdown. Well, uh, that colds are caused by viruses and not being cold. Flushable wipes should not actually be flushed. You should not use scented beach balancing soap to wash your vagina edit. You should not use this specific soap on any part of your genitals. This was about specific soap advertising to balance your vaginal powers and make your vagina smell like flour. If you do not have a vagina, this didn't even apply to you in the first place. Red with your eyeballs, people, for fuck's sake, edit too. If you have a penis, please wash your genitals with soap and water. If you have a vagina, wash the vulva with warm water and a mild soap, but steer clear of vagisil or any soap that claims to balance your fai and or make your vagina smell like fruits or whatever. Yep, a Democrat in the Texas House is trying to pass a law that would ban companies from putting flushable on wipes and require them to put a notice that they can't be flushed. 
Flushable wipes are flushable in the same way that anything's a dildo if you're brave enough. You absolutely can flush them, but you definitely shouldn't. The sixth extinction. I've never heard of this, LA5. The current one. It's also called the Anthropocene, in which human activity is causing many animals to go extinct via pollution, encroachment, and introduction of introduction of invasives and messing with their habitats too much. Anthropocene is the term used to describe the current epic, not an extinction event. Some still argue we are in the Holocene. There are five major extinctions in the geologic record. The one that killed the dinosaurs is the one most people know. There were four others. In modern times, we are entering the sixth extinction event, but they were all of them deceived, for a seventh extinction event was made. In the land of Detroit, in the fires of an old gene plant, boomers forged in secret a master extinction event to control all others.